All right. So for the past three years, I've been immersed in the research of the recovery of rare earth elements using polystyrene composites and silica composites. Quite a mouthful, huh? You should see my dissertation. <laughs> Basically, let's break it down. Rare earth elements. Those are the elements that are broken out at the bottom of the periodic table that we all ignored in high school chemistry <laughs> because we don't know anything about them. What's polystyrene? What's silica? Well, those are just composites. Basically, I'm putting them in water softener technology and seeing if they can be used in mining situations. Let's see if this goes. Apparently not. There we go. So, general announcement, right? Everybody, turn off your cell phones. Well, we're going to take a little twist on this. I want everybody in here who has a cell phone to raise your hand. Some of us have two. I know I do. Okay. I want us all to look around and take a mental picture. I want us to remember this because we're going to use it in an example later. So when I started looking at how I could integrate my research into a TED Talk, I decided to start at the beginning and look at what a confluence was. And a confluence is a situation in which two things come together or happen at the same time. Now, I'm an engineer. I, li I like simple, straightforward. I also like math. So I wanted a symbol that best represented a confluence. And lo and behold, if you take a Y and turn it on its side, you get really nice angles and a nice confluence symbol. So we're going to use that for the rest of the presentation to represent a confluence. Now, what do we have at the confluence? We have our cell phones. We have our laptops. We have our computers. We have our hybrid cars. We have our defense systems. All are dependent upon rare earth elements in some way, shape, or form. But what feeds that confluence? Well, we have mining. Mining is good. Mining is taking our natural resources and bringing it to the market. But we as a society here in the United States have decided mining's bad. We don't want those impacts. So we've shifted them off seas. Well, by shifting them off seas, we've actually amplified the impacts. We have human rights issues and massive environmental issues. So what's missing from this confluence? Responsible development. We basically shirked off our responsibility. I'm guilty of it, we're all guilty of it, because we want our cell phones but we don't want to look at the impacts of it. We don't want to know where they come from. Thus, we've shirked off our responsibility, and we've lost that responsible development. So what is the need? We're going to go through a quick example. Everybody remembers raising your hand, right? In one cell phone, there is one gram of rare earth elements. At the best recoveries, you have to mine 52 grams of rare earth ore. Multiply that by the 6.8 billion cell phones in the world, which there's only about 6 billion people. So infants have a lot of cell phones now. <laughs> that results in 390,000 tons of ore. That's roughly equivalent to five Nimitz-class aircraft carriers, some of the largest ships that roam our oceans today, which, by the way, are also heavily dependent on rare earth elements. That's just our cell phones. Imagine thinking about our infrastructure grids, our laptops. I'm sure we have iPads in the audience. Lump all this together, and that number goes up astronomically. So what's the cost? Well, I've outlined to you that myself, and all of us included, as a society, have pushed off responsible development to other countries. Well, the newsflash is, those countries don't know how to do responsible development. China recently has stated that they're going to cut off stockpiles of rare earth elements to the United States. A lot of us would just shirk this off because we get our, all our technology from China anyway. But if they reduce their, their output of stockpiles to us, we can't develop our technologies. Our defense systems suffer. Then we've looked to other parts of Africa. Can they give us rare earth elements? Well, they can. They can mine them. They can give them to us but they use things such as hydro mining. Hydro mining hasn't been used in the United States in decades because it has massive environmental impacts. And one of the most grave things that we see happening is child labor. We don't have child labor in the United States. We expect our children to learn. But in Africa, we put those children to work. Why? So we can have our cell phones. So, what do we have? We have the need and we have the cost. But what balances those? This has to be a balanced equation. And what balances that is research and development. And that's where I've been for the last three years. 
I've been getting my PhD, and I've been lucky enough to be funded by the Army Research Laboratory and the Office of Naval Research to find ways to efficiently and economically recover rare earth elements to make us competitive and make sure that we continue to have our cell phones. Now, I'm gonna take you through some of the research that we've done and show you how we can continue to be competitive. But first, a general chemistry review. Everybody remembers hydrogen. Hydrogen's compact, hydrogen's simple, easy to deal with. It's equivalent to that New York apartment that you know where everything at because it is so small. <laughs> then you have rare earth elements. They're huge. They're equivalent to that mansion that is locked behind those gates and you don't know what goes on. And this is parallel to how it acts on the atomic level because we don't know how rare earth elements interact with matter. We just know they work. So, I'm gonna step you through some of my research. On the top left-hand side, you'll see a general polystyrene structure. It's been th put through an absorption routine and actually has rare earth elements on it. You can't see them because it's undergone what we call point attachment. Basically, a one-to-one -one ratio of a functional site to a rare earth element. So, this was how it was supposed to work. I expected it, and I was gonna proceed on with my research. But then we found something very interesting. We start, started forming these structures. And you'll notice a couple of things. One is the massive crack in the middle of the particle that kind of jumps out at you, as it did me. But also you'll notice that we have sheets forming on the surface, and you have lighter gray inside that crack. Those are rare earth elements. They're metallic rare earth elements. This isn't supposed to happen on polystyrene. It's not a recovery routine that's ever been seen before. If it had been seen before, it'd be much more efficient to produce this way. So what's the impact? The impact is we found a way. I made my funders happy, so that was nice. And my, my advisor might actually give me that degree. <laughs> but what we found is we found a way to be competitive. We found a way to make recovering rare earth elements economically efficient and also reduce the environmental impact. We've gone from what is a numerous stage leach process circuit to something that can be a handful of stages and use a regenerable material. This greatly makes us be able to compete with China and compete with Africa who can lower their prices because they can afford to do research, or excuse me, do development irresponsibly. I want us to look at another thing. I was looking for Christmas presents for my best, friend kid, best friend's kids. I refer to them as my adoptive nieces and nephews. And do you notice one thing here? I found this on a toy store's website. You don't notice natural resources. You don't notice mining, you don't notice natural gas, you don't notice coal. And then you also don't notice universities, research centers, anything along those lines. We're teaching our kids that it's okay to have our cell phones, but we don't have to know where they come from. We don't have to develop our resources as long as somebody else does it for us. We don't have to know what they're doing as long as we have our technology. Well, that's not how it works. We have to have a shift in mindset, and it has to start with our kids. So, what do we have? We have the resources. We've been blessed in this country to have many deposits of rare earth elements, including other natural resources. We just choose not to develop them right now, but we can develop them responsibly. We have the regulations. We have a long history of promulgating regulations that make our lives better. But I want you to think, have those regulations gone too far? Are they inhibiting our development of natural resources such that we push the problem off on other people? We forget about the problem. And then we have the need. All of us have cell phones, right? We all enjoy those. I know my mother could not get a hold of me were it not for my cell phone. It'd be rather awkward if she were to show up and yell at me. But we do have that need. We have that need not only for our cell phones, but our, for, for our defense applications. Anything that is electronically based comes from rare earth elements in some way, shape, or form. And then we have the drive. I know I have the drive, and I know you have the drive. Thank you. <laughs>